Hi and welcome to a lesson of probability and statistics. So in this class, we are going to start uh, lessons on uh, probability and we will start uh, from some basic uh, notions of uh, probability, right? So first of all, we will define probability as a, a measure of uh, an event to occur or measure of uh, occurrence of an event so what do we mean is that uh, we are going to measure the likelihood of an event that uh, how likelihood is that it is going to occur so it's measure of occurrence of an event and we measure it in terms of uh, uh, real numbers that is uh, we take an interval between zero and one and uh, we can also say that uh, the chance is uh, uh, either it's from 0% to 100%. So we can express uh, it in terms of percentage as well. Now, after defining the probability, now let's uh, embark uh, to the topic of sample spaces. So first of all, we are going to define that what uh, actually are sample spaces. So these are actually the total possible outcomes or all possible outcomes that an event has so total possible outcomes so let us uh, consider an event of uh, rolling a dice so if we roll a dice what uh, may happen is that uh, either we are going to get uh, one two, three, four, five, or six. So these are all possible outcomes that we are going to get on rolling a die. Now, if these are all possible outcomes, then I can represent my sample space with S or uh, omega. So all possible outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, six. So we express it in terms of a set. So it is a set because it is collection of distinct objects. So by definition, we know that our set is a collection of distinct objects and these are, uh, this is a collection uh, and uh, uh, also these are all distinct elements, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a set, therefore sample space is a set of all possible outcomes, right? Now we have some more uh, definitions uh, uh, related to these sample spaces. For instance, uh, we can talk about uh, sample points. So sample points. Now, what actually are sample points? So sample points are nothing but the uh, subsets of uh, the sample space. So if we have a sample space, let's say we have this sample space, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So all these one, two, three, four, five, six are called the sample points. So one is a sample point, two is a sample point, three is a sample point, four is a sample point, and so on. Therefore, uh, these are the sample points. And then we have uh, a word uh, called an event. Now, once we are uh, uh, doing an experiment or performing an experiment, we have some events related to that experiment. Uh, for instance, if I say that if I roll a dice and uh, what is uh, I'm interested in uh, that, uh, that the number that appears is an even number. So these are the possibilities, two, four, six, because we have three even numbers in a die, right? So now this is an event, right? So this is an event that uh, the number that rolls is an even number. So I'm interested in even number or odd number or prime numbers, right? <clears throat> or uh, even if I'm interested in on a single sample point, that is also an event. Now to differentiate these events, we can say uh, a simple event and uh, a compound event, right? So simple event and a compound event. So simple event, we have on the one uh, favorable outcome. For instance, if I say that, what is the probability that um, on rolling a die, I will get a five, right? I will get a five. So this is a single point. Therefore, we can call it a simple event, right? And a compound event consists of uh, multiple sample points, right? So for instance, in a simple event, we have only a single sample point. 
that is uh, in this case uh, if i am interested in five so it's a five is the simple event um, and uh, if i am interested in an outcome like an even number odd number or uh, prime number so it consists of multiple sample points therefore this is a, a compound event right so we can call it a compound event now there are uh, various examples for instance if we flip a coin the sample space is going to be head uh, or tail right so head and tail because we have uh, only two possible outcomes when we uh, toss a coin therefore we have uh, uh, the possibilities as head and a tail right and we can say that the uh, possibility of head is 50 percent and the possibility of tail is also 50 percent if we are flipping a fair coin right so both the probabilities are 50 percent so this way we can talk about and uh, in case of rolling a die since we have uh, uh, six possible outcomes so we can say that uh, uh, the probability of uh, uh, getting a, uh, a number uh, one two three four five six so a number uh, it is going to be one over six because we have six possible outcomes and we are interested in a number one right and similarly for two it is also going to be one over six and for three four five six all these right so the uh, formula for this uh, uh, this uh, uh, event or this experiment, uh, we can say that uh, this is, uh, if I am interested in probability of getting one, let's say, so it is one over six. So one is, uh, we can say that this is my favorable outcome, right? So it's my favorable outcome. And uh, six is... Uh, uh, the all possible outcomes so all possible possible outcomes right so this way we can uh, define the probability and this is also called the classical approach to probability right so probability of an event is nothing but it is uh, the number that is favorable outcome divided by the number that is a sample space so that is all possible outcomes so this is called the classical approach and uh, which uh, sufficiently can tackle the problems where we have uh, uh, equally likely outcomes and what do we mean by equally likely is that that the all individuals uh, sample points have the same probability like in this case in the case of rolling a die or in the case of uh, tossing a coin or in case of a spinning uh, a spinner that is a fair spinner for instance say that we have a spinner of this kind uh, sorry let me draw it again let's say we have a spinner which have uh, eight or partitions for instance, spinner with eight partitions. So if we are going to spin and all the partitions are equally distributed, let's say uh, we have the eight partitions. So the amount of this partition is A, 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 A let's say. So if I say that, let's say we, we can number it one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight and now if i ask that what is the if i spin this spinner and i ask that what is the probability that i will get five on this spin so it's going to be five over eight right and uh, similarly for three we have three over uh, sorry uh, one over eight so one over eight and for getting a six we have again one over eight so these are equally likely right so if we have a fair spinner and we are going to spin then um, the result that I'm going to get, uh, the chance of the result I'm going to get has this probability, right? So these are some classical examples uh, we can think about uh, these. And we can also write in this way that the probability is 1 over k, where k is nothing but uh, the sample space, sample space or all possible outcomes right so in case of uh, uh, coin toss or in case of uh, dice rule 
dice rolls or spinners or uh, maybe uh, some more cases so where we have equally likely outcomes we have this uh, 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 probability for uh, every sample point okay now let us uh, move further now see here that we have an example when we toss a coin three times and record the results in the sequence that they occurred and the sample space uh, is this right so now what are the uh, possible outcomes uh, there uh, either we can get all heads on three tosses or we can get two heads and a tail or we can get head tail head or we can get tail head head right and next uh, possibilities are we can get tail 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 or tail tail head or tail head tail or head tail tail so these are the all possible outcomes so the, the number of all possible outcomes is eight now if i'm interested um, in saying that uh, what is the probability that i will get uh, all the heads right so now my favorable outcome is all heads that is uh, that may occur only in this situation so it is one therefore the probability of this event uh, that is uh, all heads is going to be one by eight right and uh, similarly if uh, i'm interested that uh, i'm getting interested in getting uh, uh, getting a single head so how many sample points i have here which contain the single head is this one is this one and this one uh, so i have uh, these uh, sample points where we have one head so the probability probability of uh, a single head is going to be a three by eight right and uh, probability of two heads i can also find that one that will be two heads here two heads here two heads here so again it's also three by eight right so this way we can compute probabilities of uh, events in an experiment right now uh, this is again the same example and uh, now we have a uh, example of a rolling dice already discussed okay so that is called the classical approach that we discussed now we have uh, one more approach that is called axiomatic approach to prob probability right axiomatic approach to probability now what does this approach tell us right now for instance if we have uh, multiple events and i'm interested in finding that uh, if two events that uh, uh, are occurring at same time and uh, they have something common in uh, in them or if uh, we are talking about two events and we are uh, interested that uh, uh, one of uh, either one of them occurs right so these kind of uh, questions uh, can be answered using this axiomatic approach uh, to deal with this axiomatic approach first of all we should be familiar with the set operations right so uh, now here are some definitions we have if e is an event then e complement what is e complement is that uh, that is uh, e complement is simply uh, you can say that it is uh, the universal set minus the set e right this is complement of e for instance if i have a set here this is uh, let's say this is a universal set and this is its subset a then a complement is nothing but uh, this part here there is uh, a is uh, taken out from the u 
So rest of the part is a complement, right? And similarly, if we have two sets, let's say E and a set F, then the union of these two sets means all the elements contained in E and contained in F, right? So all elements, all elements contained in both sets, right? And if there is a repetition, so we don't need to repeat, but we'll only write once, right? For instance, if it this E contains two and F also contains two, so in constructing E union F, we will on, only write these two ones, right? So do, we don't uh, need to repeat here because we know that set contains distinct objects, so it cannot be repeated here, right? And then intersection means that uh, whatever these two sets contain uh, common uh, in them, right? So a common part that is uh, in both of E and F is called the intersection. And this notation E uh, contained in F. So it means that this set E is contained in set F. Let's say this is my set F, then this set E is entirely contained in uh, this set F. So we can also say that E is a subset of this set F, right? So these are some basic uh, definitions of uh, axiomatic uh, approach, right? Now, you can look at some example. If we randomly draw one character from a box containing the character A, B, C, then the sample is space. Now, we are drawing a character from box containing these three alphabets, A, B, C. Now, what are the... Uh, possibilities so what uh, uh, possible events may occur right so now uh, now since we are taking out a character so we know that uh, the probability of uh, not getting anything is going to be zero right it is obvious because we are taking out something and then if somebody say that what is the probability probability that you are getting nothing is zero it's obvious right then probability of uh, getting a uh, single character either a b or c is going to be one by three because all uh, other sample points have equally likely outcome similarly for probability of b is going to be one by three probability of uh, c is going to be one by three all right now, similarly, uh, if uh, we say that uh, we are uh, randomly drawing one character from a box, then what is the probability that uh, we get uh, A or C, right? So we get A or C. Probability of A or C, which means that uh, we are uh, going to find pro probability of A union C. So it's A union C. So it's going to be probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of uh, A intersection B. Since uh, probability of A is 1 by 3 plus probability of B is 1 by 3 minus. Now intersection, since we know that uh, uh, we are going to get one of the uh, these uh, alphabets because we are drawing only one alphabet so they are they cannot uh, be two at a time this means that are mutually exclusive so here we have one more definition mutually exclusive right so mutually exclusive means that uh, both events cannot occur at the same time because we are drawing one alphabet from these three so we are going to get one alphabet at a time ultimately therefore for these kind of events we have uh, a intersection b is always zero for mutually exclusive events therefore this is zero so we get two over three so the probability of a or c is going to be two by three 
Similarly, for A and B is again 2 by 3. And similarly, for A, B and C is again 2 by 3. All right. And similarly, if, if uh, I say that probability of A, B and C, then I am interested in, let me clear this all stuff, probability of A, B or C, it means that probability of A union B union C, which means P of A plus P of B plus P of C minus P of A intersection B minus P of A intersection C minus P of A intersection, uh, sorry, C intersection B plus P of uh, a intersection B intersection C right now since uh, the events are mutually exclusive therefore this 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 and this is going to be zero because nothing is common in them therefore this is 1 by 3 plus this is 1 by 3 plus this is 1 by 3 and we are going to get 1 so it's the same uh, as uh, um, uh, like if I say that if we have uh, some uh, coin or some die containing uh, three sides, right? And we toss that. So what is the probability of getting um, a number or an alphabet ABC? So like in coin toss, we have two possibilities. In dice row, you have six possibilities. So each sample point uh, contains the probability of one by six there in, uh, in case of uh, die roll. So here we have a one by three for each alphabet and the total probability is going to be one, right? So this is how we can uh, proceed in these kind of problems. Now, here are some more uh, axioms of probability. And uh, these are very simple that the probability of an event is between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1, and all possible, uh, the sum of all uh, probabilities of the event is equals to 1. All right, and then if we have a union of uh, disjoint events, disjoint event means that same as mutually exclusive, that is nothing common in them, mutually exclusive then this is simply equals to the sum of individual probabilities, right? Now let's look at some more examples. Now these are further properties of uh, this uh, cymatic approach that um, P of E union E complement is P of E plus P of E complement equals one uh, because uh, the probability of an event uh, uh, sorry, probability of uh, E complement is what that, uh, let's say P of E is probability of an event that is going to occur, probability of uh, an occurrence. So P of E complement is probability of non-occurrence of that event. So ultimately, if we sum both of these, it should be equals to one, right? So this is uh, how we can think about it and what is the probability of at least one head in four coin tosses so if uh, we toss uh, four coins so what is the probability that we get at least one head what does we mean by at least one head it means that we can get uh, uh, as many uh, heads as four for instance if we toss four coins we can get head 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 tail head head tail head these are all possibilities head and tail head 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 so these are uh, one two three four five possibilities similarly we have some more possibilities like head head tail tail head tail tail head and ha uh, sorry tail 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 head tail head and then furthermore we have eight more 
uh, possibilities here like tail 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 and tail 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 head and so on right so if we look here uh, at least one head if we are interested in at least one head then we have only this event where we have no head it means that in 15 all of 15 sample points we have at least one head it means that if the all possible outcomes are 16 then we have the favorable outcome as 15 so the probability of this event is going to be 15 over 16 and probability of e complement is going to be 1 minus 15 over 16 which is 1 over 16 right so this way we can uh, think about this uh, problem right now let us move on uh, some more examples here we can see now here, here are some counting techniques that is related to combinations and permutations so we already uh, are familiar uh, with these uh, notions but uh, let us uh, make some recall of these uh, uh properties so if we have a four letter word of lowercase alphabetic characters are generated randomly with equally likely outcomes assume that the letters may appear repeatedly right now how many four letter words are there in a sample space s so now since we have uh, 26 um alphabetic uh I'm sorry uh, we have uh, 26 alphabets right so a b c d n to z we have 26 alphabets and question is asking that uh, suppose that four letter word of lowercase alphabetic characters are generated randomly with equally likely outcomes assume that letters may appear repeatedly how many four letter words are there in the sample space so how many uh, four letter words uh, are in the sample space right so uh, let's say one two three four so we have a four character word so possibilities for first uh, alphabet of that letter are 26 similarly for second are also 26 for third are also 26 for fourth are also 26 so if we multiply all the possibilities so we get 26 raised to the power four so in uh this number of ways we can construct a four letter word from these 26 alphabets right so now again how many four letter words there are uh, there in uh, s that it starts with the letter s so now we have uh, one two three four so it uh, uh, asking that uh, how, how many uh, four letter words are there that is start in s so if, uh, if i'm going to start uh, the uh, character or the name with uh, s it means that i have to fix here only one character so here we can only fix one character that is s it is fixed here so it is all, there is only one possibility for the first character and for the second we have now 26 for the third we have 26 for the fourth we have 26 so it's going to be 26 raised to the power 3 all right now what is the probability of generating a four letter word that starts with an s now that's a tricky question right so the number of favorable outcomes is what that a letter that starts with s so the favorable outcomes we have is 26 raised to the power 3 and all possible outcomes are all possible letters all possible four character letters so the all possibilities that is the sample space is 26 raised to the power 4 so the probability of this event that is uh, generating a four letter word where it starts with s is my event so it's going to be 26 cube over 26 raised to the power 4 
which is this much 0 0.038, which, which means it's only a 3.8% chance that we uh, construct a four letter word that it starts with S if we randomly choose uh, alphabets from the uh, 26 alphabets, right? So this is uh, how we can uh, see, right? Now there are furthermore uh, examples, but we will uh, move on quickly because some of them are very elementary. And uh, now look at this example that three letter words are generated randomly from the five characters. So the characters are A, B, C, D, and E. So we generate a th three letter word. So right here, one, two, three. So how many, uh, now the question is asking that, uh, where letters can be used at most once, how many three letter words are there in the sample space S, right? So now the three letter word we have, uh, so five letters we have, therefore the choice for the first letter is five. Then the choice for the second uh, letter is four and then the choice for the third letter is three, therefore, uh, the possibilities that is all uh, there's my sample space is uh, 60. So in 60, uh, 60 uh, three letter words we can generate uh, from these five uh, alphabets. And how many words containing A, B are there in S? So now how many words, are, can, how many of these uh, uh, a, B, uh, sorry, how many words that you construct with this these three alphabets uh, we have that contains A and B. So from 60, how many of them that contains A and B? So now we have, uh, since we have uh, three uh, positions here, that is one, two, three, Therefore, now A, B can be, now A can be here, B can be here. Similarly, any of the alphabet uh, that uh, C, D, E, from this C, D, E can come here. Then one more po uh, possibility is that if, uh, A and B are here. Uh, and one of the possibilities that A and B are here. So these are three possibilities. Similarly, three more possibilities if we, uh, flip these possibilities, for instance, say B here and A here, B here and A here, and then B here and A here. So there are six possible ways that A and B can be in uh, this, uh, this uh, three-letter word, right? And uh, then there remains one position for these three words, right? these three words, that is uh, these three letter uh, alphabet C, D, E. So now the C, D, E can fill this uh, one position in um, three ways, right? So we have a uh, one position, uh, that is the third position for instance, say, and we have three alphabet C, D, E. So we can fill this position in three different ways. Either we can give a C here, give a D here or a E here. So three, ways to fill the third position and uh, six ways to fill two positions which means that we have six multiplied by three that is 18. So we have total uh, 18 words that contains A and B in the sample space. All right now it, it may ask that what is the probability that we if we pick a word randomly from these 60 words so it contains both A and B. So the uh, event is that if we pick uh, a word uh, from these 60 words uh, and the probability that it, it contains A and B, it is going to be 18 by 60, right? So uh, here is the solution as well, right? 
Now here are some exercise questions uh, and some examples. So we will now uh, 